it came from when I used to play hockey as a little kid and I would be a lot bigger than everyone else and I'd be like a bus running over kids but I got the Gus bus after watching the movie Benchwarmers with my cousins pretty much every single night. We watch absolute basketball. What is going on, everybody? I am Jamie Shaw, the National Director of Scouting here at Absolute Basketball. Thank you for joining us today. If this is your first time by the channel, you want to continue to see more, uh, more highlights, more mixtapes, more player analysis, film breakdown, college coach interviews, player interviews, all the type of basketball content that you want to consume. If you want to continue to see more of it, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like it and share it across your platforms as well. But without further ado, here it is. What's going on, everybody? Jamie Shaw here, Absolute Basketball Experience. Uh, very excited uh, today to have Gus Yaldin on the show with us. Gus, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Man, things are going all right. Um, so your nickname's Gus Bus. Let's just go ahead and start there. Tell us where that came from and, and, and what that means to you. Um, it came from when I used to play hockey as a little kid, and I would be a lot bigger than everyone else, and I'd be like a bus running over kids, but – I got the Gus bus after watching the movie Benchwarmers with my cousins pretty much every single night that I was with them, and we just started to call me Gus bus from then on. So, you know, you're originally from Wisconsin. You mentioned that you started off playing hockey and all that type of stuff. Uh, how, did you, how did you get into basketball? How, how, how did you choose basketball over, say, football or hockey or other big sports up there? Um, so my mom and dad were both Division II players. My dad won a D2 uh, national championship with UMass Lowell before they became D1. My mom played at Northern Kentucky and St. Vincent and then continued to play in Europe and in Puerto Rico and coached basketball until 10 years or about five years ago. And so I've always grown up with basketball being a big part of my life. Um, I grew up when she was coaching in Wapaka, Wisconsin uh, as the head girls varsity coach then we moved to University of Nebraska Kearney in Kearney Nebraska where she was an assistant coach there and um, I learned a lot from her and her uh, staff and that's pretty much where I started to play basketball but I didn't really get into it until sixth grade when I um, kind of quit hockey because I, I didn't make the A team and I was struggling with it a little bit. I got you. Um, so you've recently announced that you're going to be transferring to North Carolina to Asheville School what all went into that decision for you, and, and what are your expectations coming through moving to the Hoop State? Um, so my grandpa lives in Aiken, South Carolina, and it's uh, with this whole COVID thing, me being in California, thousands of miles away from my family, isn't going to work. I need to be closer. My grandpa living in Aiken is definitely a big help. Um, and it was a good decision not only for me for basketball, but for academics, as it's a really strong academic school. And uh, I really have faith in Coach Whitmore and what he's trying to do there, like what he did at New Hampton. And um, I really think that we're going to be able to be a really good team and produce big numbers and big wins this year. And then it's been a relatively crazy quarantine for all kinds of reasons. But for you especially, uh, you very quickly become kind of a hot commodity, uh, you know, almost a viral sensation, tons of offers coming through and all that type of stuff. Um, what is it about your game, do you feel like, that has all these people intrigued by the Gus Bus? Um, there's multiple parts to my game, but I, I think now being a time where it's positionless basketball, my ability to play the four, the, the three, the four, and the five, handle the ball, pass the ball, shoot the ball, play inside out, and make plays, it's what's intriguing to see, is this kid going to be a future of our big men and what the positionless basketball will be, and I think Every conversation I've had with the coaches, I've talked to them about me not only playing the strictly down in the post and only shooting layups and dunks and being stretching me to the three-point line and letting me push on defensive rebounds. So you now sit at 13 Division One offers, 11 of which have come since June 24th. How have you been handling kind of the recruitment process? Um, it's been really crazy, but – 
it's been really fun at the same time. Um, I've been doing a lot of, I have to call the coaches. So there's a lot of energy that goes into that um, with co my head coach, my AU coaches, whoever it may be who uh, the coach is trying to get to talk to me. I have to go through them and we have to find time that's not only good for them, but is good for me. And there's no texting or calling. So it kind of, it's really hard in that sense, but every time I'm able to get on uh, the phone with the coach, it gets me really excited about their program and the coach and knowing that they want me to be at their program in the future. And it's really exciting and super cool. And it's all these power five programs, these notable programs and stuff. And, and obviously you're doing a lot of, as you said, zoom calls and FaceTimes and stuff. What does it look like or what does it feel like being on a zoom call or FaceTime call with these big name programs, these big name coaches, not only, uh, offering you but trying to get you to come to their program and, and make you feel wanted uh like you know what does that feel like it, it's really special growing up watching all these programs play in march madness or just play in general and seeing what they've done and the players that they've had come through there the runs they've made the the uh cinderella story moments that some of them have had it's really cool and knowing the coaches and what they've done and who they play against and what they do every year. It's, it's insane. Um, I obviously grew up a Badger fan being from Wisconsin and just being able to talk to coach guard on the zoom call with my mom. It was really special and really crazy. And uh, it's still early in the process, understanding you're, you're, you're so young. Um, but do you kind of have an idea as to what it is you're looking for in a school, like, like locationally or, or major wise or, or a program or history or whatever the case, uh, do, do you kind of have a little bit of an understanding as to what it is you're looking for in long-term? Yeah. Um, I want to play at a school that is traditionally a winning school. Um, and that I know that if I go there, I can contribute us to win, whether it be an ACC title, an SEC, a PAC 12, a big 10, and make a run in the uh, make a run in March and go try and win a national championship under a good coach who not only wins games but develops his players and puts them into the NBA or puts them overseas or even gets them a good job after college when the ball stops bouncing. Um, I also want to go to a school that I know off the court I will be sh I will be challenged in the classroom, making sure that I have to keep up good grades and good academics and making sure that. Not only am I an athlete, I'm a student athlete above everything. Um, so you've been back playing for a couple of weeks now uh, on the AAU circuit and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, the whole country is not open yet. Um, but how is it, how's your experience been uh, being back in the gym playing, uh, you know, coming out of this pandemic? Um, it's been great. Uh, it's been really interesting to see how um, some tournaments are doing it. Um, with the prep hoops thing, there's only allowed to be 10 parents in the gym. And so normally when you go to those big AAU games, you see crowds of people showing up when you're playing games that are have 10 people, maybe 20 people in the stands and like a couple other kids who play, just played watching your game. But um, so the atmosphere has gone down a lot, but it's just great to be back on the court and playing against good teams and just be playing again. And you mentioned earlier that you've been working in the winter and it's good to see the fruits of your, your labors come, you know, with the offers and stuff during this quarantine time and everything, what have you been working on in your game? Like what aspects have you been working on? Um, I've been working on getting in shape, uh, making sure that my body is right. And I've been working on my strength to make sure that I'm not only bigger, but stronger than other defenders and players. And uh, definitely my shot, making sure that I can get that to fall and uh, just different types of moves that I can do on guys that I haven't done before just to see like what if people are going to be falling for ball fakes head fakes whatever I can try and throw at them to see what'll work so for those who haven't seen you play before how would you describe your game and what players have you heard that you play like and who do you think you play like um I would describe my game as a stretch four um the versatile forward who can run the floor hit open shots, be able to create off the dribble, play very well in the post and make the right right decision. Um, I've been compared to Nikola Jokic, Kevin Love, uh, and Luka Doncic, and I'd probably say my game mostly translates to uh, Jokic and Kevin Love, maybe a little bit of Doncic when I play off the dribble, but uh, mostly those two guys. Um, 
But I'd have to say my favorite player to ever watch and like just role model would be Kevin Durant because obviously he's a six six ten six eleven kind of small forward guard who. Oh! So it seems like every every week we can't go without having two or three viral clips of of Gussie Alden uh, on the internet and stuff. When, when when the first one went viral and, and it showed that people kind of cared about you and what you were doing, how you were playing. What did that feel like? And, and what's that kind of like seeing every week, you know, people going crazy over your clips? It's kind of insane because you when you step into a game, you don't really think, what am I going to do? That's going to be crazy. That's going to go all over Twitter, or all, all over Instagram, and blow up. You kind of just think, like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna get a stop? How am I gonna score? And then you happen to be playing defense. You you poke a kid, wrap behind your back, and get to the rim, or you spin off a kid, hit a nice little layup, come down, hit a pull up three, whatever you do. Um, it's really like, and then you kind of think to yourself after the game, yeah, that was a really nice play. But not, when you're playing, you're kind of like, uh, that that might have been a little bit risky and. Your coach looks at you and he's like, don't shoot that again. <laughs> um, so you always have those little moments, but it's been absolutely insane just watching myself blow up on Twitter after following these accounts for like since I was in seventh and sixth grade and like just watching myself go up on them. and just, It's been insane. That's awesome. Uh, and then I guess what are your ex- – not expectations. What are your goals moving forward into next year, coming to North Carolina and all that type of stuff? And, and through this uh, summer, what are your goals and expectations moving into next year? Um, the rest of the summer, I just want to get my name out there as much as I can. Uh, I want to be put as many coaches on, the, on my radar as I can, whether it be a really small school or a really big school. It's not about that. It's about the fit for me. Um, and this year at uh, Asheville, I want to – not only win games, but I want to have a great season myself. Um, put up big numbers, play against some some really good competition, win a lot of games, um, and bring back a winning culture to uh, Asheville, and hopefully bring home a, a state championship. That's awesome. And, and anything that you want to leave these people with as, as as they're getting to know you and all that type of stuff. Anything that you want to leave them with uh, here as we as we close out. Uh, not much. Uh, I'm just really excited to get to work in the hoop state and uh, continue to build my success and uh, grow from grow from my experiences that's awesome Gus thank you so much for joining us today I tell you I, I cannot wait to see what you do uh, this coming year and in the next few years to come sounds good thank you so much for having me really excited to come back again sometime absolutely thank you guys thank y'all very much for joining us today on the absolute basketball experience for Gus Yalden I'm Jamie Shaw and we'll see you next time Absolute basketball.